Hello and welcome to episode four of Defining Moments. Today I'm joined by a former Watford defender who made more than 200 appearances for the Hornets, Steve Terry. Steve, how are you, mate? Yeah, very well, thank you. You look forward to this? Yeah, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Before we get into some of your defining moments, uh, we've got the kit in front of us here. It's from the 82 uh, to 85 period. Um, just looking at it now, I know we can't see the other side of it, but is there any initial memories from that shirt that really come back to you? No, there's a lot of good memories. I'd, someone said, because that's a small, so I would normally put that on, <laughs> but I wouldn't be able to get that off. I need an extra large now. But uh, no, that was a good period of uh, Watford's history, really. Mm. The, the Ivaco shirt, isn't it? And um, we had some uh, good games in that shirt, you know, some like, I think, Europe and mm. the FA Cup runs. So yeah, it's, uh, it brings back a lot of memories. We'll talk about them now, but before we do that, uh, the start of the 1982 season. Uh, what were you thinking going into that one, Steve? Um, love the Barnet, by the way. <laughs> well, I just said to you, but that was uh, there was quite a, three of us went for a perm, and uh, I tried to brush that out. So that wasn't a good start to the uh, <laughs> season, but uh, yeah, I I remember this quite vividly because um, I trained really, really hard all, all the way through the summer. I just was desperate to get in the side because uh, Watford had Simsy and that, so I had to. Uh, and I think I started the first game of the season. Graham said he couldn't leave me out because I trained that hard. Mm. Uh, I think we had a couple of injuries. I think I played centre forward. I had it in my notes that your first Division One start was the eight 0 win versus Sunderland. Set yeah, that's what someone said. I didn't realise that. So <laughs> really? that, that that was good because yeah, I made my debut against Sunderland in the uh, in the football league. My first game when I was 17, and we went to Oakley Park and lost five one. So to play in that and to beat them eight 0 yeah. was. Um, Can you imagine a better start to your top flight debut? Not really, no, it's the best start you can, can get. I remember, because I listen to talk sport a lot on the radio, and that was Ali, Ali McCoy was a young 16, 17 year old, and I remember clearing one off the line, uh, first five minutes from Ali McCoy, but he always talks about that's his worst experience coming really? to uh, Watford and going home. It's a long way to go home. Yeah, it's a long way. Yeah, it was a long way for me to go home when I made my debut, so I know how they feel. Yeah. So, um, no, that was a good start. And then it was a month later. You got your first uh, Division One goal, if you remember correctly. Two-two draw versus Norwich. Yes, I, yeah. I, memories from that one? Yeah, I do remember well, first goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was, you got to uh, remember that one. I remember that because I've got a uh, that ended up on the front cover of uh, Roy the Rovers. Really? So I've got a picture of that with Roy the Rovers on me jumping. Love up that, like love so that. that's good. Yeah. Great stuff. So that season was obviously an iconic one for Watford fans, uh, and it finished with the two-one win versus Liverpool, May '83. Um, what was that like with the lap of honour at the end of the game, securing the second place finish? Was that, was that a real proud moment for you and the squad? It was a proud moment for the squad. I was a bit disappointed because I was okay. sitting in the, in the uh, stand having to watch it because I didn't, hadn't played that much, that's it, but I was still really proud to, you know, how much you know, I was involved in a, a lot of the games mm. and uh, it was a good moment to, you know, to finish second in your sort of first season. Was, um, is that one of the most memorable seasons of your career, maybe, or is it? Uh, well, uh, probably one of them. Okay. One of them because you're making your, you know, your debut in the first division. But uh, yeah, there's a few more. Qualifying for Europe as well. Qualifying for Europe, yeah, that was uh, a special moment. Yeah, well, I was going to touch on touch on Europe. Uh, Kaiser Slautern first leg, and then the second leg at Vicarage Road. Um, you came on as a sub in the first leg. Yeah, I think. One. Yeah, I think um, Simsy hurt his knee, so I came on. Uh, uh, for him, mm. and I, well, I think a lot of people thought we'd lost three-one. That was. That was it, because we'd had a lot of injuries at the club as well, so we was down to our bare bones of players, really. Mm. We can see by the side that came out to play like Kaiser Slalom in, uh, in the second leg at Vicarage Road. The second leg of Vicarage yeah. Road. Is there something extra special with that one, under the lights, Vicarage Road? Was it, it was yeah. meant to be, really? Under the lights was brilliant. Yeah. You just you feel sort of unbeatable at home, uh, especially under the lights and the atmosphere. The, uh, the pitch is a bit wet <laughs> and stuff, so yeah, that was... Um, yeah, that was unreal. Was there belief within the squad going in, before going into that one? Because from what I was reading, everyone had kind of written us off go, going into the second leg. You as a squad, did you really believe that you could get back into it? I think we had such a young side mm. and everyone wanted to do so well in the, in the team. Um, and we scored early as well. You know, we scored two goals really early. So we, our confidence built after that. So uh, and we played so well. Mm. And Ian Richardson still lives local now. Now to get two goals, um, you know, after that, I think they did have a couple of chances, but uh, we rode our luck, so yeah. Well, that was the, the club's first uh, experience in Europe, um, first experience for yourself as well. What was that like, just in general, that whole campaign? How did you find that as a, as a player in that? It was great. We, we was going, um, you know, we went to Germany, mm. played Kaiserslautern, stayed over overnight in a the hotel there, and then we played the two teams uh, 
think one was Levski Spartak. Levski Spartak, which was behind the Iron Curtain still mm. there. And uh, that was a bit different. There wasn't much to do there, just stay in our room. Well, literally just go to the game. And then go to the game, game come back. You couldn't do anything wow. else. You weren't allowed out to do anything. So, and that was pretty similar to the um, second team, the mm. third team we played who were in Czechoslovakia then. Mm. So uh, that was similar as well. They were still behind the Iron Curtain. So it wasn't like uh, we went anywhere. We had to go. We went there, had something to eat, had our food, trained. Just completely different to what you, yeah. yeah. So, wow. Did um, GT do anything differently for the European games to maybe league games? Is there anything different in this preparation or even just yeah, in the games? Not really. Um, Graham, I think Graham's a great believer in you know the way we played. We played the same in the league games as we do did in the uh, in, in Europe. So uh, no, it was um, it was an experience. You know, I never thought that Watford were going to play in Europe. So yeah. uh, no, it was a good experience. So. Hopefully in years to come they might get the chance to play there again, but you don't know. Someone said to me the other day, how many people have played for what for actually in the uh, cup final and Europe? Wow, yeah. And there's not many actually, if you look at it, I think there's only about seven or eight that have played, yeah. in, played in both. So hopefully one day Watford... Can... Special club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Steve, just touching on the 84 FA Cup final run, um, when did you start to believe that we could, we could make it to the final? Oh, we believed from the start we could win it with the side we had and the exciting football we were playing. So. Uh, yeah, we, we believed at the time we could win any game. And then got to the final, um, that occasion, arguably the biggest game in football on that day. Um, what, was, what was that like for you? The preparation, I imagine all the media coverage, what was that whole occasion like for you? For you? Well, it, 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 was, it was good, because I'd, you know, I mean, watch it, we used to watch the FA Cup when I was a kid, and it was like, not just the game, it was everything else mm -hmm. all the way through. I think Graham sorted out quite a few different events to take our mind off okay. the actual game. So we, we was... What, what were you doing before, pre-match? Pre-match, we was at um, a hotel and just... Because uh, we was only yeah, 20 yeah, minutes from right. Wembley. So, uh, yeah, a normal pre-match, what we normally have. Uh, things on toast. <laughs> so, yeah. Can't be. <laughs> yeah. And then the actual ride to the um, stadium was good because mm. all the, you see all the supporters on the way in and everything. And then you start... Start to believe. You start yeah, and get, getting nervous as well, so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you start to uh, start looking forward to the game. Is that one of the proudest moments of your career to play in an FA Cup final? Because not everyone can say that. I, I know we recently got to the FA Cup final, we didn't end too well, but what was that like for you? Was that yeah, one well, of the was, moments? Yeah, well, like to say, watching it as a, little, as a little boy all the way through, you always dream. Uh, you play in the playground, you want to play at Wembley, mm. so uh, to get there was... Um, yeah, special moment. And the reception from the fans as well, um, what, what was that like? Oh, that was brilliant. Well, they were always brilliant anyway, well, for supporters, so <laughs> they get behind you. So, yeah, yeah, that was, I think, you know, they were excited, excited as well. They couldn't believe what was at Wembley as well mm. at the time. Just touching on one of the more controversial moments from that one, uh, Steve, the Andy Gray header. Um, if AR was back there then, do you reckon it would have still stood? No, no way. <laughs> you see the... What happens nowadays, uh, no, that, that goal would have been chalked off because he did touch Steve Sherwood's arm. Well, Steve said he did, so. <laughs> I always said to Steve Sherwood, he should have just gone through and punched his eye off, really, <laughs> and it would have been a lot easier. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, nowadays that wouldn't, that wouldn't been given. I've got to ask you about the, the iconic headband. But a lot of fans are getting a bit of stick if I didn't ask you. Why did you wear it? Is there a story behind it? Yeah, well, I, played, uh, I played a game, I can't remember which one it was, uh, and I got stitches. Um, in the previous game, and then we played against, uh, I think it was Norwich actually, it must be Norwich again, mm -hmm. uh, John Fashion, and we clashed heads, and um, well, this my head split open, um, went on, had it, had it stitched up, mm -hmm. uh, and then come back on, and it just, wow. so, as soon as it came back on, there was another header, and it opened back up. And then I started wearing it because I had stitches in it, and the following week, I think I had about 30, 40 stitches in it. I, um, had the stitches taken out and my head was still out there but I, in two weeks after I'd done it I was, I was playing so I started to wear this uh, foam across it just to protect it. Any time I didn't wear it yeah. I got cut so I, okay. I, I wore it. I didn't go like the fancy Dan like uh, was it Eric Young and yeah. Steve Foster they went the full <laughs> headband. I just thought well it's just there for a purpose not a stylish thing. Yeah Can not a fashion. No well. a fashion yeah not a fashion. <laughs> So just to wrap up, Steve, if you had to pick maybe one moment during your time here at Watford, what, what was probably the most proud one for you? Or the one that you always remember? You had to pick one moment during your time here at the club. It was probably walking out of Wembley, uh, out the tunnel, and then you're looking up and you can see uh, 
uh, my mum and dad, my granddad, and all my family. And um, yeah, probably that. You know, your, your family's there sharing like, a special occasion, and uh, which is something you've always dreamed of. You know, when, when you was a kid. So to be able to do that and, and uh, share it with uh, your family is uh, special. That was great, Steve. Uh, if you'd like to watch all of the Defining Moments series, then just click here and subscribe to the channel for more content just up here.